Attack on Pearl Harbor, 1941. Unveiling the Tapestry of Motives, Japan's Bold Gambit at Pearl Harbor. As the world shifted and groaned under the weight of escalating tensions in the late 1930s, a tide of national interest and imperialistic ambition swept over the land of the rising sun. Japan, gazing westward across the expansive Pacific Ocean, saw an opportunity. The United States, the sleeping giant, stood as the primary obstacle to Japan's expansionist dreams. To establish dominion over Southeast Asia and secure critical resources, Japan's military strategists conceived an audacious plan. Their objective? To neutralize the U.S. Pacific Fleet stationed at Pearl Harbor, a quiet naval base nestled in the serene azure waters of Hawaii. The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor wasn't merely an operational strategy. It was an echo of the rising sun, of Japan's resolute determination to take hold of its place in a rapidly changing world order. The United States, with its looming presence and massive naval force in the Pacific, represented a significant obstacle to Japan's ambitions. The threat of a robust American response to Japanese territorial expansion had to be addressed decisively, strategically, and swiftly. Japanese military leaders were men of calculation and precision. They recognized that disabling the U.S. Pacific Fleet, at least temporarily, could provide a crucial window of opportunity for Japan's planned military expansion into Southeast Asia. While the idea of launching a preemptive strike against a nation not officially at war was fraught with controversy, it held a certain tactical appeal. A swift surprise attack could potentially deliver a crippling blow to the American fleet, dampening the prospect of immediate retaliation and giving Japan free reign in the Pacific. The decision to attack Pearl Harbor was steeped in more than mere tactical considerations. It was a testament to Japan's audacious ambition, a step towards forging a new era of Japanese dominance in the Pacific. It was an acknowledgement that Japan was willing to go to extraordinary lengths to secure its place in the world. A surprise attack would send a clear message to the world about Japan's military might and its readiness to stake its claim. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor wasn't just a significant military operation. It was a pivotal moment in world history, altering the course of World War II and the geopolitical landscape of the Pacific. The decision to strike, a daring gamble by Japan's military command, was a testament to the nation's ambitions, its determination to achieve regional dominance, and its willingness to challenge the status quo. This audacious move would soon plunge Japan and the United States into a brutal war, with repercussions that would echo across the globe for decades to come. Operation Z, the intricate ballet of Japan's clandestine preparation. In the sprawling, whispering expanse of the Pacific Ocean, there unfurled an elaborate orchestration of military preparation cloaked in the utmost secrecy. A dance played out in the shadows, characterized by the deliberate, stealthy movements of the participants. This spectacle of coordination and tactical brilliance bore the code name Operation Z. Embarking on a path of aggression, Japan directed its military prowess towards an audacious goal. It aimed to cripple the U.S. Pacific Fleet, thus clearing the path for its territorial expansion into Southeast Asia. The High Command strategized a two-pronged aerial assault a tactical gamble that could offer a swift, decisive victory. The plan required extraordinary precision, akin to a conductor directing an orchestra in an intricate ballet of war. A fleet of six carriers, the backbone of the operation, was discreetly amassed. Ships turned into floating fortresses, bristling with an arsenal of fighters and bombers. These carriers navigated the Pacific's vast expanse under the cloak of radio silence, their course leading them closer towards the Hawaiian waters. Like pawns in an elaborate chess game, they slowly converged into formation, advancing under the veil of secrecy. Their metaphorical dance floor was a simulated model of Pearl Harbor, carefully recreated to allow Japanese pilots to rehearse the impending attack. Model ships floated in an artificial harbor, providing a tangible representation of the targeted fleet. It was here, amidst this illusory battleground, that the pilots honed their skills, perfecting their aim and timing. Every maneuver was scrutinized, every potential scenario dissected. Yet this ballet was not confined to the physical realm. There was an equally intricate dance occurring in the minds of the strategists. 
They weaved a complex tapestry of disinformation, maintaining diplomatic communications with the U.S. while masking their true intentions. As diplomats exchanged niceties, war plans were finalized in Tokyo. Meanwhile, the Imperial Japanese Navy's cryptographers embarked on a clandestine symphony of their own, encrypting communications and concealing the fleet's movements. Their work was instrumental in maintaining the operation's secrecy, their rhythmic typing and ciphering a counterpoint to the military's brute force. As the day of the attack neared, the tempo quickened, and the rhythm of the preparation became increasingly frenzied. Yet, despite the mounting tension, the ballet's choreography remained unwaveringly precise. Operation Z was the embodiment of Japan's military discipline and strategic acumen, a dance in the shadows preparing for the devastating overture of war. It was the quiet before the storm, the tense silence that belied the thunderous violence about to be unleashed at Pearl Harbor. Day of Infamy, the dual waves of destruction at Pearl Harbor. The dawn of December 7, 1941, arrived with deceptive tranquility on the tranquil waters of Pearl Harbor. Bathed in the soft light of morning, the unsuspecting U.S. Pacific fleet lay nestled in its harbor, oblivious to the maelstrom that was about to be unleashed. A sudden cacophony of engine roars shattered the placid ambiance, heralding the commencement of the day that would infamously etch itself into history. The dual waves of destruction at Pearl Harbor had commenced. Japan's meticulously orchestrated plan, like a hunter poised for the kill, sprung into ruthless action. From the vast expanse of the Pacific, a fleet of Japanese aircraft descended upon the harbor. Torpedoes cleaved the water, while bombs hurtled from the sky. Lethal ballet dancers in a dance of death, tracing their fatal arcs towards the slumbering vessels below. The first wave of attack had begun. This was no haphazard barrage. It was a symphony of orchestrated destruction. Each unit had a distinct role, a designated target. Bombers focused on airfields and battleships. Torpedo bombers aimed for the fleet's heart. The eight battleships anchored in Battleship Row. As smoke began to billow from the attacked targets, a ghastly reality began to dawn. The heart of the U.S. Pacific Fleet was under siege. No sooner had the echoes of the first wave faded than the skies darkened with the advent of the second wave. Intended as the coup de grace, it sought to obliterate whatever the first wave had failed to decimate. This wave was distinct, marked by a higher proportion of dive bombers, their targets, aircraft carriers and cruisers, their task, to ensure that nothing of strategic value remained intact. What followed was a spectacle of cataclysmic destruction, a ballet of violence so horrifying it seemed almost surreal. Ships, once symbols of American naval prowess, turned into flaming wrecks. Airfields, erstwhile launching pads of soaring wings, transformed into graveyards of scorched metal. As the Japanese planes withdrew, leaving behind a smoke-laden sky and burning sea, the magnitude of the devastation became apparent. The day of infamy, as President Franklin D. Roosevelt would later describe it, had delivered a shocking blow to American morale and naval power. The dual waves of destruction had achieved their macabre objective, a spectacle of devastation hitherto unseen on American soil. The echoes of this brazen attack reverberated far beyond the waters of Pearl Harbor, signaling a new phase in the world's deadliest conflict and irrevocably altering the course of history. Echoes of Destruction, America's Defiant Response and Entry into World War II. The smoky remnants of Pearl Harbor served as a stark tableau of devastation. As the echo of the last Japanese plane faded into the distance, the grim reality of what had transpired settled upon the shocked populace. Amidst the smoke-laden skies and the twisted metal, the American spirit flickered defiantly, refusing to be extinguished. The echoes of destruction had not merely been a summons for America's entry into World War II. It was a clarion call for a defiant response that would shake the very foundations of the global conflict. In the immediate aftermath, Pearl Harbor was a tableau of chaos and confusion. Yet, despite the grim reality of loss, the air hung heavy not with despair but determination. Wounded but not defeated, the U.S. military rallied. Firefighters combated the raging flames, sailors aided their comrades, and rescue workers scrambled amidst the wreckage. It was a sight that bore testimony to an indomitable will, 
a testament to resilience in the face of adversity. And it wasn't long before this resilience reflected in the highest echelons of power. On December 8th, a day after the attack, President Franklin D. Roosevelt addressed a joint session of Congress and the nation. His speech, an eloquent symphony of resolve, denounced the attack, proclaimed December 7th as a date which will live in infamy, and requested a declaration of war against Japan. Congress responded with near unanimity, fueling a surge of patriotism that swept across the nation. Within moments of Roosevelt's address, America had transitioned from a neutral observer to an active participant in World War II. It was not merely a declaration of war, it was a proclamation of intent, an intent to rally, to persevere, and to prevail. Meanwhile, as the world looked on, the Pearl Harbor attack was engendering profound changes in American society. Enlistment and recruitment offices teemed with people ready to serve. Women stepped into roles traditionally held by men, now absent at the front lines. Industries pivoted to war production, symbolizing the total mobilization of American resources towards the war effort. In a broader context, America's entry into the war marked a significant turning point in the global conflict. It brought fresh resources, manpower, and industrial might to the Allies' cause. The Axis powers now faced a formidable adversary across both the Atlantic and Pacific. In conclusion, the echoes of destruction in Pearl Harbor marked America's defiant response and her resolute entry into World War II. It was a moment that bore witness to a nation's resilience, altered the trajectory of a global conflict, and etched itself deeply into the annals of history. The attack had intended to cripple, but it galvanized instead. It had sought to intimidate, but it invoked defiance. From the ashes of Pearl Harbor, a resurgent America rose, her spirit unbroken, her resolve unyielding.